Society was created in the 1920s in Germany. The leading world media were Maria Otzic, Gudrun, Sigrun, Traute and Heike. The world emblem has the following meaning. Left the black side represents the present dark age of lies and deception. An evil cabal rules over this world and creates war after war. In the middle we see the lightning strike of divine intervention and judgment day. The right side in purple represents the new golden age. This age will be an age of peace, freedom and enlightenment. This time I'd like to make a video about the Hollow Earth basics. As you can see in the picture, people that promote the Hollow Earth theory or that believe that the Earth might be hollow state practically that all planets in the solar system and beyond our solar system and even the stars are holoids. First we will check out a small introduction by Hollow Earth Planet Basics from the Biblioteca Pleiades website and we will check out the theory behind it and how it logically it builds up. Well, there is a website from bibliotecapleiades.net. I'll put the link below. And it gives practically the Hollow Earth Planet Basics. Part 1. Hollow Planet Basics. Chapter 1. Hollow Planet History. Sir Edmund Halley, 1656-1742, Halley's Comet. Halley's most controversial theory originated from a study of magnetism. Halley realized that the magnetic poles were constantly moving. He believed this could be explained by having two fixed magnetic poles north and south in the crust of a hollow earth, and two more inside, which were moving. He envisaged hollow spheres, one inside the other, rotating at slightly different speeds. One of these inner shells would contain the other set of magnetic poles. If that shell rotated slightly slower than the outermost shell, then that might account for the apparent motion of the two of these magnetic poles when the other two stood still. Halley speculated on whether there might be life inside these shells. Since God had created animated beings which inhabited every part of the earth as we know it, why should he not therefore have all the cost interior of these shells to be habited? He suggested that the atmosphere might be luminous, or that the inner sides of the spheres might emit light, or there might even be small suns inside the earth, which he referred to as peculiar luminaries below, of which had no sort of idea. Many of the core features of the hollow earth theory were born out of Halley's speculations. Could there be any logical reason for thinking that a planet might be hollow? The only possibility which comes to mind is that a spinning sphere might become hollow naturally. This was originally suggested to me by John Flora, who joined my internet list. His argument is as follows. Scientists believe stars and planets formed from huge clouds of dust in space. Gravity caused them to condense. Then they started spinning and eventually became spheres. If this were the case, like an ice skater, these stars and planets would have spun even faster as they contracted. The more you contract, the higher the velocity it becomes. This would be dictated by the law of conservation of angular momentum. However, the solar system tells a different story. It is not the smallest planets which spin the fastest, but the largest ones. The Earth rotates at 24 hours, and many of the planets smaller than it rotates even slower. Jupiter, the largest planet, which was a diameter more than 10 times that of the Earth, spins about its axis in a mere 10 hours. That is not one what would expect from condensed solid planets. John pointed out that this is also true of all the different types of stars. The larger ones spin faster than the smaller ones. He believes that it can be shown mathematically that the high rate of rotation would cause a spherical body to expand until it reaches a point of maximal inertial stability. In an email dated 15th of February 1988, he explained in part, As I said earlier, the maximum the moment of inertia for a rotating sphere to sp spin stably is that of a hollow sphere. He suggested that the planets and stars be regarded as tornadoes in space, he explained. This smaller size, slow rotation, bigger size, faster rotation, relationship of planets and stars rotation is exactly what you would think if the planets and stars were created hollow. However, because according to spherical shell dynamic theory, the planets and stars were created out of a convection turret between warm and cool regions of space, swirling the particles into whirling, twirling tornadoes of particles. In the zero gravity of space, these tornadoes took on the shape of spheres with open holes, and the faster they were rotating, the larger they became. John's logic also suggests that hollow planets almost have polar holes of some kind. 
He pointed out that there was a point on which the centrifugal force and gravity balance, gravity as we shall see later, is zero at the center of the Earth or any hollow sphere. All mathematical exercises show that if one could suspend an object at the center of the Earth, then it would be weightless. So when forming a planet rotates, the matter at its core will be flung away from the center. Gravity, however, increases as one moves away from the center of a planet, because there is also more matter below it. So a point is reached whereupon gravity is stronger than the centrifugal force, and the expansion then stops. One thus ends up with a hollow spinning sphere. So, logic behind this is that normally, if the planet is smaller, it's small condensed, and the larger the planet is, the slower the rotation. You would assume it because it has more mass, that it would take more time to rotate this much mass if it's a full Earth planet. But the logic behind it again is really simple. If matter starts turning because of an external force, and this matter starts being pulled away from the center of the Earth because of this rotation, then it will practically stop pulling away from the Earth when it has reached in harmony or reached in balance with gravity. So the matter goes around an energy force that turns. That is the planet energy force or the tornado, the three-dimensional tornado, that actually makes this turning motion of the planet. At the center of the Earth, there is no gravity. It's a gravity no point. So the matter actually is pushed outwards, and then with the gravity pushing inward, and the centrifugal force pushing outward, you get a balanced holoid or hollow sphere. That is practically the thinking behind hollow planets, and hollow moons, and hollow uh, stars, and hollow suns. There's a really good book that you can read. It's A Journey to the Earth's Interior by Marshall B. Gardner. You can also get it on the Sacred Text Archive. I'll put the link below. If you read the book, it gives you all the information necessary to start believing that the Earth might be hollow because of the evidence that is there. Uh, it's a book written in 1920, a really eye-opening book. It's a really good book portraying practically also this theory that the Earth might be hollow. And since there is practically evidence suggesting that Admiral Richard Evelyn Byrd went to the Inner Pole in 1947 with his own aircraft, and actually met the Imperial Germans who had a colony there in Swabia. Well, I printed practically the documents. These are practically maps of the Imperial Germans of the Third Reich, secret maps of the inner earth, of the hollow inner earth. From the eventchronicle.com. And here we have the picture of the hollow earth. These official maps confirm the existence of Agartha, an entire world inside our planet. One of the most interesting questions many people have asked for centuries is whether there is a possibility that our planet might be hollow. And here are the maps. Well, this is from the map portrays both hemispheres of the inner world, with here practically a U-boat Stützpunkt der Kriegsmarine, a U-boat base of the German Navy. This is New Swabia, North Schwabenland of New Berlin. This is the Valkyrian Ocean. This is the entrance to the inner earth. And it is the other hemisphere with its continent, Liberia, Asgard, city of the Asis, and Shambhala, the city of the gods. Well, this is the original document. Up here is the well, the beginning of the Valkyrische Ozean, huh? and it is the seal, and also the warning that if this would ever become public, that this has to be destroyed as quickly as possible. Bestätigt durch das Kommando der U-Boot-Flotte der Kriegsmarine des Deutschen Reichs, and it is a real seal. And it even gives a detailed account, Karte für das passierende Meeresenge, on how to get practically to the inner earth via the ocean. Well, that is the high resolution version of the map. As you can see, you can see it better. Asgard, Stadt der Asen, Pyrenees Meer, Valkarischer Ozean, Amadak Archipel, Valkarischer Ozean. And here is an U-Boot-Stützpunkt der Kriegsmarine, or U-Boat base of the Imperial German Navy. Here is New Swabia, the colony of New Swabia, with its capital city, New Berlin. There is the other hemisphere, with Liberia, the continent is called Liberia. Again, the Valkyrian Ocean, the Valkyrische Ocean, and Shambhala, City of the Gods, and Asgard, Stadt der Göttlichen Ordnung, or Göttlichen Lichts, or something like that. And that they have practically a colony there. So we have practically maps already from that era. We have a witness that actually went to the inner earth, according to Admiral Richard Evelyn Burtz's diaries, that he actually met the Imperial Germans inside the hollow earth in New Swabia. Well, here in New Swabia, New Berlin, back then in 1947. The polar orbiting satellites at the very beginning that NASA sent up and even the Russians sent up, these polar orbiting satellites that had a polar orbit, a real polar orbit, all vanished. This means they crashed because practically there are openings at the inner earth and they all converge to a point that to the inner earth entrance and in that they all convert that's if you look at the polar orbiting satellites pictures online uh, you can see practically that they all converge practically on a point that is the entrance to the inner earth 
I believe that the earth is hollow according to the evidence that is there. One day I will see it with my own eyes in the new golden age when we all are allowed to travel inside the inner earth as tourists to uh, meet up the other kingdoms that live down there and even our relatives, our German relatives that have been living inside the earth now since 70 years. And uh, it's really incredible. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Hello Earth Basics, it's just, you just have to, it's a sinking game again. That you have to think on your own how a planet might evolve independent of what the experts might tell you. And I just wanted to make a video about Hello Earth Basics actually. I made several videos on the topic already just a long time ago. We have evidence that the Imperial Germans believed that the Earth is hollow. We have map evidence of that time. Uh, telling us that they already mapped the inner earth. I believe the Imperial Germans are uh, righteous people who uh, seek the truth, who are in the interest of the people and not against the people, who work in the interest of the people. They always put the interest of the folk above their own personal interests or personal gains. That is what the Imperial Germans do. It was practically white rulership, not Zionist Jewish rulership. And one day when the Germans or the white people of this world, the Aryan people of this world are freed, from mental slavery and financial slavery, we will now be able to lead our lives as we choose to and not be just a wheel of the system, a clock in the system and working your ass off from 9 to 5 or 50 hours a week or more, I don't know. We will be independent of the system and we will put practically the economy at the feet of the people It will be serving us to make our lives better, more healthier and with more happiness. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, I'll see you next time. Cheers! I know you're out there. I can feel you now. I know that you're afraid. You're afraid of us. You're afraid of change. I don't know the future. I didn't come here to tell you how this is going to end. I came here to tell you how it's going to begin. I'm going to hang up this phone, and then I'm going to show these people what you don't want them to see. I'm going to show them a world without you. A world without rules and controls, without borders or boundaries. A world where anything is possible. Where we go from there, it's a choice I leave to you.